الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ask Allah to give us iman and beneficial knowledge and that he allows us to practice upon based on that iman and ilm and that he grants us the tawfiq to be of those people who have iman and ihtisab during this beautiful month so that we can complete it with the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with him having guided us with him making us of those who are the shakirin and with him making us of the people of taqwa these three characteristics can be found within the ayat of as-siyam and if you look at the passages which talk about as-siyam in surah al-baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the characteristics of those people who fast Ramadan successfully كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So the primary objective of fasting Ramadan is for us to attain a taqwa Then the second ayah ends with with us being of those who attain shukr for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And then the third ayah ends with us attaining hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, this is a month of taqwa. This is a month of shukr. And this is a month of hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah that he grants us this favor and he allows us to get closer to him. And he makes us of those people who have those characteristics. And we are not just going mechanically through the actions of fasting and uh, and perhaps, you know, uh, not being as proactive as the people of Taqwa and the people of Shukr and the people of Hidayah perhaps should be doing in the month of Ramadan. And from the things that we learn from the people of Taqwa and Shukr and Hidayah is absolutely essential for those people to have this is the Qur'an. There is no way that a person can become from the person of Taqwa without the Qur'an. There is no way that a person can become the person of Shukr without the Qur'an. And there is no way that a person can become the person of Hidayah without this blessed speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Quran Al-Kareem. And that is something which is very obvious. For one of the benefits that we can learn from what the Quran gives us, aside from the fact that it gives us Iman and it gives us actions and it gives us behaviors and it gives us the good things that we want from the dunya and the good things from the akhirah, one of the biggest things that he actually teaches us and the engagement of the salaf of this ummah one of, the, one of the things that we learn from the engagement of the salaf of this ummah with the Quran this month is that they showed a great deal of importance of reciting the Quran in this month and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Shah Ramadan unzila fihi al-Quran hudan nas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen this month the month of fasting to be the month that we should engage with the Qur'an, to recite from the Qur'an, and to benefit from the Qur'an. But we also learn that more, the more a person engages with the Qur'an and has a love for the Qur'an, he will actually gain taqwa. And again, you might think, well, that, that's a bit obvious. You know, you would then learn and you would then, you know, act upon yourself and then, you know, you would change certain things in your life. One of the biggest things that we learn from the people of Taqwa is that they respect their time and they preserve it correctly. And the engagement of the Salaf of this Ummah and the Imam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the Qur'an teaches us how much they used to respect and love the time that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given to them in general in life but also in this blessed month of Ramadan this is why when Anas asked Zayd ibn Thabit Zayd ibn Thabit did suhoor with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so Anas bin, Anas bin Malik asks Zayd ibn Thabit what was the duration between the suhoor and the iqama for Salat al-Fajr of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Qadr Khamsina Aya. It was the duration between Fajr and Suhoor of 50 ayat. 
And one of the things that we can learn from the fact that Zayd ibn Thabit speaks to Anas bin Malik about time is that he uses minutes and seconds and he equates it to the amount of time he can use to recite the Qur'an. So instead of saying, well, it, t- it, t- it took us a minute or it took us two minutes or it takes us uh, the distance, as we find in some hadith, where the companion said that the distance between the iqama and the adhan used to be like for us to go to Baqi, relieve ourselves, make wudu, and then come back, and then we would even still meet the 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 takbir al ihram. But now Zayd bin Thab is speaking to his companion and his friend Anas bin Malik, and he said to him, radiyallahu anhuma, that the distance and the duration between the suhoor and the uh, adhan and the Fajr of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 50 ayat. So this teaches us that not only did Zayd ibn Thabit take his time correctly and he, he, he preserved his time and he didn't you know, become negligent of his time, but he was able to think that this amount of time I can recite that much Qur'an. And not only does he do that for himself, but he explains that to his friend, who his friend then immediately comprehends and registers that, yeah, this is the duration between the Fajr and the and the Suhoor of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we also learn from the attitude of the Salaf of this Ummah that they used to have to habitually go out and this helps us a great deal now because we're in a lockdown and we're not able to go to the Masjid whereas the actions of the Salaf of this Ummah and you will find this even in the books of the Malikiyya where they have said that it is actually more beneficial for a person to pray in his own home, even if there is no lockdown. It is better for him to pray in his home, because the jints, or the, the nature of nawafil should be done at home. And it's better for the person to do it at home. And they based it on the amal of the people of Medina, the actions of the people of Medina, and you will find that the companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'een, used to be at home, for their Ramadan and during their night prayers. And they used to recite the Quran a great deal. And that teaches us something which is that if a person is not able to go to the masjid, then it's not the end of the world. In actual fact, he is following if he continues and he has ikhlas and he follows the, the attitude of the salaf, then he will actually be following their sunnah which they used to practice for themselves. Radiallahu anhum ajmain. And the point that we're making here is that they used to habitually had to go out to find where they are during the night. That's the extent of Qur'an that they used to recite during the month of Ramadan. So they used to go out, they used to look at the sky and they used to come back in. And they used to recite and they used to go out and they used to come back in. Until when they used to see the vertical whiteness. And the vertical whiteness is the fake Fajr. Then they used to know that now it's close. So they used to pray a little bit more and then they used to make the witr and then they used to make their suhoor very quickly. And you will find this as an attitude from many of the companions including Abu Bakr and Ibn Abbas and many of them. So what we learn this far, let's just recap this introduction. What we have learned is that the salaf of this ummah used to engage with the Qur'an and it used to liberate them and it made them. The Qur'an will make you the, the, from the people of taqwa. It will make you from the people of shukr and it will make you from the people of hidayah. This is because this is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this blessed book in. But not only do we learn that you will attain those characteristics for yourself if you engage with the Qur'an generally but specifically in this month also, but we will also learn a life lesson which is that you can only attain taqwa and shukr and hidayah for yourself if you measure your time and you preserve it correctly. And we have the hadith of the, of the Prophet wasallam found in Bukhari Muslim on the authority of Ibn Abbas anhuma, where he said, كان الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس He was the most generous of all people. وَكَانَ أَجْوَدْ مَا يَكُونْ فِي رَمَضَانِ And he used to actually increase his generosity and the most generous nature would come out during the month of Ramadan when he used to meet Jibreel 
السلام. And Jibreel used to descend and they used to study the Qur'an together. Jibreel used to descend and he used to study the Qur'an with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hina yalqahun Jibreel ajwadu bil khayr min rih al-mursalah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma describes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in saying that the most generous that he used to be ever in his life used to be when he used to recite the Qur'an during the night in Ramadan with Jibreel. Allahu Akbar. And there's another narration with an extra wording where Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma said, وَلَا يُسْأَلُ عَنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا أَعْطَى there was nothing that he used to be asked during the night time. Except that he used to just give it away. So the Qur'an actually liberates a person from the attachment that he has to the dunya. And it actually makes him a nice and a kind person. Which can only be for the people of Jannah walking in this dunya. Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad radiallahu an, rahimahullah said... إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يَقُولْ كُلَّ لَيْلَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says every single night outside of Ramadan, but then especially imagine how it would be inside of Ramadan. أَنَا جَوَّادْ وَمِنِّي الجود. I am the most generous and all generosity comes from me. وَأَنَا الكريم And I am the most kind. وَمِنِّي الْكَرَمْ And all kindness and all goodness comes from me. So what we learn, my brothers and sisters, that the Prophet ﷺ used to be the most kind and he used to be the most generous and this all comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting him those characteristics. And as Ibn Abbas anhuma explains that he attained those characteristics when he was reciting what? When he was sleeping, when he was on his phone? No. When he was reciting the Qur'an. And perhaps the listener can relate to that especially if the person is engaged with the Qur'an during the night prayers, that he will hear something and he will benefit from something that he perhaps hasn't benefited from before, even though he's read those ayat plenty of times in his life. Or he reads something from a translation, or he hears something from the tafsir, and something strikes in him, something hits him, and he looks at something from the Qur'an in a different manner. That is because when a person engages with the Qur'an, every single time, but more specifically in Ramadan and more specifically during the evening, a person is granted Jude and Qaram in a way that perhaps he will not be able to attain in any other time. Also from this incident from the Prophet ﷺ sitting with Jibreel ﷺ, we also learn the importance of Completing the Qur'an and increasing in recitation, but we also learn the importance of learning its manners and learning its tafsir and learning its lessons. Because this is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Qur'an as we have said. But it's also the month that the salaf of this ummah used to increase in learning. So it's been authentically been recorded that Umar radiallahu an used to gather Ubay ibn Ka'b and Tamim al-Dari radiallahu anhum ajma'een and they used to be the imams they used to be the imams that used to lead the Salat al-Taraweeh how was the Salat al-Taraweeh? it's been narrated in more than one narration that in each raka'ah they used to have 200 ayat in each raka'ah they used to have 200 ayat to the extent that the people that were standing behind them in congregation used to suspend themselves or hold themselves up with sticks. And it's been narrated that some of them used to suspend themselves up with ropes. They used to put ropes and they used to hang them against the pillars and they used to chain themselves or fasten themselves against those ropes so that they could stand up for that duration. It's also been narrated from some of the tabi'een that if a person recites Surah Al-Baqarah and he completes it in no less than eight raka'at, they would consider that that person has not prayed correctly 
or he has reduced the amount that he should be reciting during the night. 286 ayat, the salaf of this ummah used to find it habitual that a person does that kind of number every single night. Now, a person might think, well, okay, that's a, that's a great deal, and I'm not sure if I can do that for myself. But what we learn from this is that the salaf of this ummah, they used to recite the Qur'an in a measured manner, in a, in a, in a balanced manner. But that didn't affect their ability to understand and contemplate on the Qur'an also. That didn't affect their ability to understand what they are reciting and contemplate on what they are reciting. So it's very important, my brothers and sisters, now for us to understand that when you engage with the Qur'an, you will attain for yourself characteristics, you will attain for yourself a learning that you perhaps hadn't attained before. But also, you will be granted a tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stand in a manner which pleases Him. And your love and enjoyment and your recitation will increase. But that can only come about if a group of people have a want to do that, a need to do that, a motivation to do that. And we can find, and inshallah, hopefully some of this will be motivation for us, from the salaf of this ummah, how they used to engage with the Qur'an. Muhammad ibn Ismail, who's Muhammad ibn Ismail? Imam al-Bukhari. Imam al-Bukhari used to complete the Qur'an every single day in Ramadan. He used to complete the Qur'an every single day in Ramadan. And by night, he used to complete the Qur'an every single three nights so every batch of three nights he used to complete the quran so he used to recite the quran for himself when he is not standing every single day he used to have a khatma he used to complete the quran and when he used to pray the salat al taraweeh he used to do 10 juz every single night rahimahullah ta'ala what happens to imam bukhari is that his book and his Sahih remains on our bookshelf. What happened to Imam Bukhari? Some of the ulama have said that anybody who denies Sahih Bukhari as being Sahih, then he is a kafir. Because the ahadith and the authenticity of such a book has become mutawatir. Some of the ulama have said quite famously that it's the most correct book after the Quran, after the Mus'haf itself. What happened to Imam Bukhari? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated this man who was a freed slave, belonged to a, a, a family from, you know, freed slave. He didn't have any kind of social status, but through this Quran and his love for the Quran and his interaction with the Quran, Allah gave him something that he didn't give to other people. Sa'id ibn Jubair, another one from the Salaf, he used to complete the Qur'an every two nights. So every night there used to be 15 juz without fail. Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik, who used to be a ruler from the Umayyads, used to complete the Qur'an every three nights. And he used to make sure that on the 27th night, he completed the whole Qur'an on that 27th night. And insha'Allah, and I know this has been an introduction and we were supposed to get into tafsir of Surah Al-Qadr and we will do insha'Allah. But I felt that this introduction is very important, especially with this, what we have from Qatada, rahimahullah. Qatada, on a habitual basis, he used to finish the Qur'an every seven nights, outside of Ramadan, every seven nights. When it came Ramadan, he used to complete the Qur'an every three nights and every single day he used to teach from the Quran Qatada Rahimahullah every three nights he used to complete the Quran every single day he used to teach the Quran and every single night in the last ten nights he used to finish the Quran every single night from the last ten nights he used to finish the Quran 
So from this, my brothers and sisters, we learn, and we also know quite famously, Imam Shafi Abu Hanifa, they used to complete the Quran twice a day in Ramadan, twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. We will learn from this, my brothers and sisters, that the Quran has a great deal of importance in our lives. And if we neglect it, and we don't engage with it, with the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not grant us the characteristics that we want for ourselves. We want to attain taqwa, that's why we're fasting. We want to attain the level of the shakirin, that's why we are fasting. We want to attain the level of those people who have been given hidayah. We want to correct our manners, just like the way that Ibn Abbas described the Prophet ﷺ as being somebody who was generous. We want Allah to be kind and generous to us. We want to follow the example of the Salaf of this Ummah in all aspects of our life. With this introduction, my brothers and sisters, we can understand that all of it starts with our introduction and our connection and our and our and our level of of respect that we show to the Quran. And without that, a person will never attain all of those characteristics and those things that he wants for himself. A person will never attain success. A person will never attain goodness in his life in the dunya and the akhirah. What we will do, inshallah, we will look at the introduction of Surah Al-Qadr, inshallah, and we'll go into the tafsir of the ayat, inshallah, from next week. Surah Al-Qadr is the 97th surah from the Qur'an, and it was revealed in Al-Madinah. And perhaps what some of the ulama have mentioned is that fasting became prescribed for the Prophet wasallam in the second year after Hijrah. The obligatory fasting in Ramadan. So it is likely that Surah Al-Qadr was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ after that. Therefore, it is a Madani Surah, and this is the opinion of the majority of the ulama. Some of the ulama have said that it was revealed in Mecca, but what seems to be the correct opinion is that it is a Madani Surah. Surah refers to a chapter of the Quran. And Surah is a block of ayat which come together which explain that chapter of the Qur'an. Therefore, if a person was to read one ayah or two ayat, etc., then he has not read a surah. A surah comes as a block of ayat which come together in the Qur'an. That's what a surah is, that's what a chapter is. Al-Qadr, now the ulama have differed as to what is Al-Qadr. Some of the ulama have said Al-Qadr refers to a ta'deem, meaning it is a night of power. It is a night of power. Others have said Al-Qadr refers to a night of importance, and yani taqdeer with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And others have said Al-Qadr refers to Qadr, which is the pre-decree that we know. So there are three opinions from the ulama of tafsir which refer or, 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 or which talk about the meaning of the name of the Surah Al-Qadr. Why is it Al-Qul Al-Qadr? Some of them have said it is because it is something which is important with Allah. Some of them have said it is because it is something which is virtuous with Allah. And some of them have said that it is the night of Qadr. It is the night of pre-decree. Now before we go into this a, a little bit more further, what we learn from this is a very important point, which is a point in, in our aqidah and our iman and our tawheed, which is that some of the ummah and some of the sects of this ummah believe that Allah doesn't have any actions. They believe that Allah doesn't have any actions. Because if Allah has actions, this would necessitate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a body. This would necessitate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a body. Therefore, you will find some groups of this ummah believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no actions whatsoever. And this is the opinion 
of the Jahmiyyah. Some from the ulama have said, Allah doesn't have any actions, but it's not because we would then think that Allah has a body, no. They said, if Allah moves, then he is resembling the creation. Therefore, Allah doesn't move. And this is the opinion of the Ashris and also the Jahmiyyah also, but the modern day Ashris and the Matrudis as well, where they say that if you believe that Allah has actions, then you're resembling Allah to the creation. Because Allah, if you say Allah actually speaks, then you are saying that Allah speaks like a human being. If you're saying Allah uh, ascends, then you are saying that Allah ascends like a human being, etc. Whereas Ahl Sunnah believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does as He wills in a manner that befits His majesty. He does as He wills when He wills in a manner that befits His majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the night of Qadr is actually proof for Ahl Sunnah walillahi alhamd. How so? Like we have said before, the ulama have differed as to how they've understood what Qadr is. Some of them said it refers to a ta'zim, that is a night of importance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of them have said that it is a night of taqdeer, a night of virtue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of them said that it is a night of Qadr, it is a night that Allah pre-decrees or establishes His pre-decree for the coming year. So for Ahl Sunnah, we affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actions on this night. Allah speaks on this night. Allah descends on this night. Allah speaks to the angels on this night. As we know from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Atakum Ramadan. Ramadan has come to you. Shahru barakatin. Yukshakum Allahu fi. It is a, is, a, is a month of barakah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surrounds you with this barakah during this month. For you nazil rahmah on this in this month, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down and your sins will be expiated and your dua is answered in this month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at you and he looks at your competition and he looks at you striving in this month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasts to his angels about you during this month. Allahu Akbar. So from this, my brothers and sisters, we learn that this month is a month of goodness. It is a month where we attain for ourselves certain characteristics. It's a month that we can follow an example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. He has not left us uh, trying to seek our own example. Walillah, alhamdulillah, has given us a salaf, salaf from this ummah. But also from the benefits of the discussion from this tafsir, as we have seen here, we learn, walillah alhamd, that it has an impact on a person's aqidah and his iman. When he realizes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about you, when he realizes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends his mercy and his, and his barakah and his, and his favors upon you specifically, when he realizes that the doors of Jannah has been opened for this Ummah, when he realizes that the dua has been answered for this Ummah, when he realizes that there is no other fasting person on the face of this dunya in the way that is pleased to Allah and beloved to Allah except for this Ummah, when he realizes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends and when you speak to him, he is speaking back to you. When you stand in the night prayer and your obligatory prayers, when you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah speaks back to you. When he realizes that when a person says, wa mustaqim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to you. Allah is talking about you. And in this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a night which is extremely important with him. A night which is extremely virtuous with him. A night where you decree will be written whilst you are standing. Your decree and your provisions will be written whilst you are supplicating. Your lifespan and your health will be written whilst you are saying, Subhanahu Rabbi al and Subhanahu Rabbi al 
You are being talked about whilst you're in Ruku. You are being talked about whilst you're in Sujood. You are being discussed over whilst you are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the night, in these night prayers, reciting from the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reciting the same kalam, the same speech of the one that you are seeking to get closer to, you are reciting his words. Allahu Akbar. How many people want to get closer towards a celebrity or to a to a person that they love and they memorize their works and they memorize their poetry and they memorize all of these things that they are famous for and it doesn't benefit them in the slightest whereas you are a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are memorizing and you're reciting and you're studying from the statements and the speech of the one that you want to get his approval of and his happiness and his pleasure of you are reciting statements which are eternal you are reciting statements which every single one of them is multiplied by 10. So with this, my brothers and sisters, this surah and our attachment to the Qur'an and this month specifically renews our aqidah and renews our iman. And we shouldn't be like those people who become devoid and, uh, and, and, and think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't really change my life. I'm going to pray and I'm going to, I'm going to fast, etc., but I don't genuinely believe that Allah acts in a manner that befits His Majesty because of that lack of aqeedah and that lack of iman and that lack of tawheed in people's lives. It creates robotic acts of worship. Whereas the point that we're making here of this aqeedah point which is so crucial and, and, and essential for us to have a successful Ramadan and a successful life which is that the person must have a good understanding of the names and attributes and the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Surah Al-Qadr is an example of that. It's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's a surah and it's a night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has multiplied. It's a night of importance and it is a night of pre-decree with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where your decree will be transmitted from the pre-decree that he has written about you from before. And it is only the person from Ahlul Sunnah who realizes that. Whereas the people who are not from Ahlul Sunnah will be worshipping Allah in a manner that is not in the manner of Ahl Sunnah. How can you worship and, and seek from a Lord where He doesn't move? Or He doesn't act? Or by saying these things, we don't want to ask those questions because it could then necessitate that Allah has a body or you're resembling Him to the creation. Ahl Sunnah are actually proud to talk about the Tawheed of Allah and His names and attributes and say that we are following the Salaf of this Ummah. So bi idhnillah inshallah we will continue with the tafsir of the the coming ayat inshallah next week but to summarize today's session we have been through some very important principles that we need to understand very very firmly in our lives number 1 this is the month of quran for the people of taqwa number 2 this is the month of quran for the people who want to attain the level of giving shukr to allah number 3 this is the month of Qur'an for those people who want to attain the hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month of Qur'an which teaches a person to give priorities to those things in his life. Just like the salaf of this ummah used to rush back and forth into their house, back into the garden. Into their house, back into the garden. What for? What's the purpose? To recite more Qur'an. To contemplate on more Qur'an. To worship Allah with the Qur'an further. To the extent that some of them even measured their minutes and their moments by how many ayat they can recite from the Qur'an. And this is why we have looked at some examples in this lecture of how some of the salaf of this ummah used to exceed everybody else that has ever recited the Qur'an. Completing it every night, completing it every two nights, completing it in one raka'ah, Uthman bin Affan radiallahu an. And some of them used to increase in reciting as well as the tafsir and this is the purpose of why we have chosen this as a, as a subject and bi idhnillah inshallah we will from next week talk about the tafsir in detail of these ayat taken from the works of Muhammad bin Sari wa Thaymin rahimahullah we ask Allah to grant us iman and tawfiq and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to get closer to him through this Quran and that he has mercy on us through this Qur'an. 
and that this Qur'an becomes a spring for us in our hearts and in our lives and that we become from the people of Allah Ahlullahi uh, Ahlullahi wa Ahlul the Ahlullah, the people of Allah and the people who are specific for Allah the people of the Qur'an we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He elevates us through this Qur'an that we are given the ability to recite it in the dunya and that we will be the ones that will be reciting it on Yawm Al-Qiyamah being told, Iqra, Waratil, recite and continue to recite فَإِنَّ آخِرَ مَنْزِلَتَكَ for your last position, your status in Jannah will be the last ayah that you recite from this Qur'an. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He renews our iman through this Qur'an, that He perfects our statements and our actions and our behaviors through this Qur'an, and that He allows us to get closer to Him through this Qur'an. And just as we hold this Qur'an in our right hands, that we are given our books of record in our right hands on the day that we meet Him. هذا والله أعلم وصلى اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. I'm not sure if there's any time left. If I'm, this is the first time I'm using it, so please uh, forgive me if I'm not using it correctly. But uh, I believe uh, we were going to leave a few minutes at the end for questions. I don't know if there is any time left for that. So there's a question here: What is better in Ramadan, going through translation? or reciting the Qur'an? And this is a very important question which follows on from how the Salaf of this Ummah engage with the Qur'an. Our Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Aziz al-Raji, one of our Mashaykh from Riyadh, Hafidhahullah, he said that the example has been given to us from the Salaf, how they used to recite the Qur'an, how they used to seek ilm, how they used to travel on journeys, but we're not doing that anymore to seek ilm. The example has been given to us from the Salaf. However, the objective of us engaging with the Qur'an, engaging with worship, engaging with seeking ilm, etc. is not that you put put yourself through difficulty. It is that you purify yourself and you benefit. The point is that you purify yourself and you benefit. So the answer to this question, what is it better? Is it better for a person to recite the Qur'an or to recite the translation? What I will say is that it is better for him which is going to increase his iman, which is going to increase his connection with the Qur'an and have his iman raised and which is going to help him improve in his actions and his statements and and become a better Muslim. So whatever is going to help him facilitate that, whatever is going to facilitate that for him, then that's what he should be doing. However, what I would say is that it's very important for him to keep a balance also. If he can read Arabic, then he should recite the Qur'an, even if it's a juz or half a juz a day in the, Quran, in the month of Ramadan, completing at least once. If he can recite two juz, three juz, ten juz, then he should be doing that. But also using the rest of his time with tafsir and translations and, and things like that. So I would say a balance is better. But ultimately, if he has to choose, then to choose the thing that is going to help him improve in his iman. I think that's uh, I think that's the end of the questions I think that was the only question that we had unless if anybody else has a question Jazakallah khair to the questioner and Jazakallah khair for you all for attending uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he doesn't make this as our last session. Please forgive me if I have uh, said anything which is incorrect or if I haven't met any expectations because I believe people have entered into the room uh, expecting to hear the tafsir of Surah Al-Qadr but they have heard an introduction on how the salaf were with the ummah, uh, with, the, with the Qur'an, the salaf of this ummah, how they were with the Qur'an instead. But I think it's very important that those principles need to be uh, reminded and, and set down that a person must increase uh, with the Qur'an and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us success in the dunya and the akhirah until next week inshallah at the same time Tuesday 7 o'clock this uh, lecture will be uploaded inshallah on uh, YouTube as well 
Bismillah. I'm not sure how it works with Zoom, but I have a recording here and we'll upload that also, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ilant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.